it was the first training yard. Um, Mr. Frampton trained here for King Charles I, so he was able to put it where he wanted, so it's got the prime spot at the bottom of Warren Hill. Um, the Dawson family dominated here, and St. Simon, who was voted the horse of the millennium only a few years ago, he was trained here. And uh, I took over from Mr. Warren. I've been here for over 50 years. And attached to it is Osborne Yard, uh, which is the oldest buildings in Newmarket. They're on the 1604 map. It's a very professional place. There's 2,700 horses. There's 81 trainers. They're the best public gallops in the world. I mean, there's a staggering thought, which I think very few people understand, but every grass gallop in Newmarket that isn't watered or got peat moss, all the ordinary grass gallops in Newmarket are divided into two halves. One half you use this year, the other half you use next year. So where the horses canter today on the grass, no horse will be on there for two years to the day. And there is nowhere else in the world where you can do it. And they've been doing it here since 1730. With the yard, I've tried to keep it so that if um, Mr. Dawson, Matt Dawson and Fred Archer, if they came back here, they could find their way round. But I've added in what I hope are all the modern things. So there's a swimming pool at the back, uh, there's a treadmill. We keep trying to improve them and we keep trying to add on all the new things. I, I was the first trainer who ever scoped a horse anywhere in the world. I could, couldn't find a vet to do it. I've got 14 training who were with me for two years. I have a sort of two year course, so they're with me for two years. And I've got uh, three of the top uh, 10 in, in France, Pascal Barry, Francois Roja, and Christophe Furland. And here, William Haggis and, uh, and Simon Crisford. But of course, it's opening up now very much and competition's getting tighter and tighter. And uh, nobody can sit on their laurels for long. Um, but certainly England led the way for, for, for most of racing's history. The value of British racing is that it is still thought to be the best racing in the world and therefore the prestige is more. We're so lucky that the Queen has such an unimpeachable reputation and is so universally loved. It doesn't matter if your country crying out for independence you still love the Queen. And so to have the most watched race in the world, which is the Grand National, and to have the Queen, and to have the oldest classic, I mean, we have, we're very, very fortunate, aren't we?